Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash is always a win. That was quick. Three seconds? Earliest win? Who could know? Mr. James Gunn. Can I call you James? I'm gonna call you Gunn. We're not even 10 seconds in and you're Easter egging us with the Bell Boeing V-22 Osprey in the background over Burbank for the WB logo? So, the Suicide Squad opening credits. And the trickery starts right away. Savant's X is on the WB wall point to this being his movie. You didn't even know we were in a puddle. Even if you've seen the movie, you forgot. Also fun fact, this wasn't planned. James Gunn just saw the puddle on the day and used it. <laughs> I will not be showing the heartless, brutal bird murder. Instead, here's Michael Rooker totally pulling off Crocs. You know the deal. Successfully complete the mission, you get 10 years off your sentence. Leave it to James Gunn to acknowledge that this isn't the first Suicide Squad in a playful way. You can feel them rushing through the introductions. Good dog. Creator of the modern version of the Suicide Squad comic, John Ostrander doing the most of his time on screen. There are so many wonderful moments just in this intro. Blackguard messing with the cop, Boomer wiping his boomerang, but for the love of all that is holy, let's get Sean Gunn his own weasel movie. Just look at the way he walks. Look at the way he sits. Look at his eyes. Badass good guy. Wait, are they, are they good? I mean, kinda. They're not all guys. So, badass good peeps? Nailed it. What are you doing back in prison house? I got road rage. Again, not pretending like Suicide Squad didn't happen. They both have the same crappy job, but they're finally starting to get along with their coworkers. I got road rage. In a bank. Ha! Must have used Canary's car. I'm putting 20 on him, but he's gonna bite it. Grim, but I feel like they know something we don't. Your name is Letters? All names are Letters. Seriously, this cast. I know it's all bait and switch and they're almost all gonna die, but I would gladly watch a film with this Suicide Squad. Is this thing a dog? Oh my god, is it a werewolf? Come on, you don't want at least 90 minutes of this fluffy boy solving crimes? Not a werewolf, okay? He's a weasel, he's harmless. I mean, he's not harmless, he's killed 27 children. But... Like, maybe just killing kids? I can't say for sure what his deal is yet. I repeat, the weasel is dead! It was at this point that we should have all started to get clued into what this opening was actually about. Uh -huh. I'm the one who calls you. Oh, it's that kind of movie. Nothing like making one of the current pop culture it guys, the snitch traitor, and just splattering him. Wallace, we need to retreat. Negative flag. The mission is too important. Ha, she means the other mission, but sure. This is a tough group. You can make it. Okay, no. Never change, Margot. Never change. Flag with the John Wick weapon change. <laughs> Those are appropriate faces. You knew this is how it was going to go, and it still lands. Such an amazingly ridiculous idea to use Mal for this. Boomer! Great death. It's as if he was tired of it all. Still genuinely bummed. Captain Boomerang was the part Jai Courtney was born to play, but at least he got a couple good kills in. <laughs> it just shouldn't be funny. It's not funny. The setup and follow through of making us think Savant, especially as portrayed by Michael Rooker, is some sort of ultimate quiet badass, and then he runs away literally in tears. Although no shade, I'd be right behind him. Gun, you are all right in my book using world elements for text. Love how it's as if the dissipation is reversed. How's team two holding up? Ha, now the movie can start. And look at these titles, just shut up and take my money. You'll forget for a second that it's a James Gunn flick and then the Jim Carroll band comes in with a song directly addressing the events of the movie and you remember. The needle drops in this film will be pure fire. Ah, karmic comeuppance. This I'll show, obviously. Well, kinda. Gun, you son of a gun. I think I love you. can't win every needle drop, but we're not gonna sleep on the Decemberists. A world-class marksman. You'd be forgiven if you forgot that Will Smith's character was dead shot, not blood sport, and I honestly appreciate that they left the door open for him to come back. He's in prison for putting Superman in the ICU with a kryptonite bullet. Given Soup's last interaction with kryptonite, he's lucky it was just a quick visit to the ICU. Wait, how do they operate on him? Does the entire OR have to be lined with kryptonite? Either way, we know how accurate blood sport can be. And while Bloodsport does have a somewhat similar power set and story to Deadshot, he's a very different character. I enjoy the, oh, come on, this again, bait and switch gun, my man. In the state of Louisiana means that under the right circumstances, she could be tried as an adult. Props to Louisiana for reminding us that the sad, messed up reality we live in is a million times worse than any DC nightmare. So far, the most evil thing Waller has done is totally legal and has absolutely happened in real life. <laughs> Everyone stand down. Miss Waller, I don't- STAND DOWN! I mean, she didn't even flinch. Badass bad girl. He does exactly what I do, but better. Fun joke that also gives a hint that while Waller knows Bloodsport is the born leader, Peacemaker will be willing to do literally anything to complete the mission, so she needs two of them. So smart, me. Enjoy books so much. Look, Ron Funch's version of the character from the undeniably fantastic Harley Quinn animated series is flawless. But I gotta admit, I've grown to really like Sly's version. And that's what I'd call a cinema... Finn? Eh? 
Where'd everyone go? Oops, a recording of the live reaction of Idris Elba and John Cena entering the room. Millennials. What? The borderline fascist is complaining about millennials. First off, avocado toast, now sleeping in. Next will be that she won't help bury her country's decades of torture and abuse. This is Sebastian. Say hello, Sebastian. I know, I know. With the Weasel movie I'm requesting, we're gonna have a lot of money invested, but get Sebastian his own franchise now. I'm not shaking the rat's hand. Also an Oscar. Hey, poke it at, man. I was hoping you'd entertain my kid's birthday party. Sean Gunn stealing the scene with two different weirdo characters 10 seconds apart. What? Loki's homeworld? JK, JK, sorry, sorry. The real DC nerds just got super stoked. Our intelligence sources tell us that Starfish is extraterrestrial in origin. Okay, now DC nerds are freaking out, assuming the trailer hadn't spoiled it for you already. Known as La Gatita Amable. Let's just type that into the old Google Translate. La Gatita Amable. Whoops, never mind. We're all gonna die. I hope so. Oh, for f sake. <laughs> Just like that, Polka Dot Man becomes everyone's favorite character. I don't understand how James Gunn makes comedy seem so effortless. Gunn, you minx. You get me every time. I love how you can just sort of make out that Polka Dot Man is glowing in the background of all these shots before his reveal. It's just a rash. That's a rash. Well, that's a dope gun. Lou Labor giving hope to us YouTubers everywhere that one day we also might get to die next to Margot Robbie. James, have your people call my people. Twitter has said I'm a dilf, whatever that means. Carry it for Carry it for who? For what? This is such a great setup. This bit works even if there's no payoff, so I think we're prepared for that, but luckily that's not the case. Honestly, after the opening, this legit made me grab my seat. It was smart to let us know no one's safe. How deep of a sleeper are you? I was having the most wonderful dream. Relatable. Hungry. Even more relatable. John Cena's underwear routine. I mean, John Cena's workout underwear. I mean, I Cena John's underwear. I mean, John Cena's workout routine. But in hammock. Oh, he's offering you a pretty leaf. This world doesn't deserve Sebastian. Something about a slick skinned shark hiding in a jungle that just warms the heart, you know? I cherish peace with all my heart. I don't care how many men, women, and children I need to kill to get it. America. Literally, that's, that's not my commentary, it's in the movie. Oh no! <laughs> this is so funny and brutal, but definitely hits different once you know they're killing the good guys. On subsequent watches, this whole scene is kind of melancholy and disturbing. Which, yeah, well played gun. And brutal. No one likes to show off. Unless what they're showing off is dope as f <laughs> no, I'm right back into loving this. Remember that brief graphic nudity warning? Well, this is it. Gun flipping all the troops. <laughs> does throw polka dots at people. Sorry, it's so flamboyant. It looks cool. Encouragement and compliments. Yep. Compliments. Gosh, I turned them into my mother right. in my head and killed them. Everyone's favorite character. Is that rat waving at me? Oh crap, he's everyone's favorite character too. Two favorite characters. Also, Sebastian had an excuse too. Yeah. I mean, this is why James Gunn was born, to give us all the things we never thought we'd see in live action film, like the thinker with weird crap sticking out of his head and Starro, and all in not a crappy C movie. Pumped. Uh, it's everything I'd get yeah, hoped for. L less pumped. You hold that Starro reveal for later. Gunn, you are welcome at my house for dinner anytime. It's a pleasure to serve you. Gracias. Nice to see Harley all dolled up and treated well for a change. Holy Juan Diego Bato's workout routine. Speedo. Hey, before coming back to the squad, Harley got her old tattoo covered up with something more empowering, now reading Property of No One. So if you're... Really up in the indie rom-com vibe, that whistle for the choir was already pouring on. You are perfect. You were so everyone. freaking hot. <laughs> Love? And that is how babies are made. Didn't see it coming, although Chekhov's gun was lying right next to him. Killing kids, it's kind of a red flag. Ethics win? When you're tasting men, is as bad as mine. They don't just go away quietly. They tell you that the music you like ain't real music at all. Or spend a bunch of time trying to like prove mathematically that Imagine is a bad song. Tears you apart after a while. If you're ever having trouble explaining why James Gunn is so good, this, it's this. This scene is built on a bit. The bit is that Harley is so insane that in her mind, murdering a man to avoid marrying him was the most mature thing she could do because she's just sane enough to recognize real evil. But then underneath the bit is this sincere monologue from Margot Robbie that has a crap ton of truth and probably hits home for a lot of people who are drawn to toxic relationships. This is James and Margot at the top of their game. Nope, hope you die a horrible death. Gun, you magnificent bastard. What happened to your brothers and sisters? Some lived. 
some guy. You mean like Kaleidoscope? And your mom. Where is she now? Everywhere. If there's one shot that I think is the perfect example of the tone of this film, it's right here. It's so weird. It's so funny. It's so sad. It's all of the things all at once, and I hate it, and I love it. Oh, man, not even Sebastian is safe. You're a good man, Colonel Fine. Well, he did. Well, that stuff about his daughter, you... Wouldn't really do that, right? You don't know half of what I would do, John. It's true. She once killed a room full of you people. <laughs> Staring out the window with the implication that you're contemplating your entire existence and wondering why you feel so isolated despite being constantly surrounded by people all the while sad music plays? <sighs> Been there, Nanawe. Or maybe he's just still hungry. Nom nom. My father's burdens became too heavy to carry. He was gone. Taika Waititi is always a win. And how about this window flashback origin story? Quick to the point and emotional. Don't you worry, eh? I'm gonna get you out of here alive. I'm going to get you out of here alive. Why not both? Mantis! Forgot the rap. Peacemaker. I couldn't stop the smile forming on my face. Looking out for a little dude. Also a nice bait and switch softening us up to him before he goes full CIA on flag. Stay away. Only thing that makes K-Flay better is Cena's moves and lip bite. Never fails. So weird, so funny, so sad. He's been Piter, he's been Kurt. Let's just take a moment to appreciate that we all remember his start as Joker's thug. Nope. On one. One. Teamwork. Gun, you actual stable genius. You really outdid yourself this time. Nope, that's, that's illegal. You can't do chapter titles this diegetic. It's not allowed. Ah, the unstoppable Harleen Quinzel. Holy crap, did she just lift him off the ground? <laughs> and it's a fun horror movie reveal with her eyes opening. Wait, did he just tell his friend he was torturing Harley with emojis? Huh, he did. He did. I mean, those are mad skills, but James, I really think you need to keep Tarantino off the set from now on. What were you saying about the unstoppable Harley Quinn? K -k Combo. Also, holy crap, how is this movie not NC-17? Badass former bad but trying to be good girl. And now we get to see how Harley sees the world. Again, not entirely sane, and if Birds of Prey is all from her point of view, it is, she narrates it, it would explain why it's extra stylized. <laughs> Even her own subconscious birds know to be terrified of her. And Harley's POV is so powerful, it's still happening in the background. Bird. B there's a bird thing happening in this movie, and I'd really like to dive into that with you, James. Well, I can go back inside and you can still do it. That's patronizing. Have I mentioned that Bloodsport's mask somehow makes Idris Elba's golden voice even more enticing? Are you two all right, yeah? I'm so sorry. That's all right. Harley Quinn. Bloodsport. Hugging. Gun. You did an art installation this time. I'm, I'm running out of things to say. So this time I'll show you my appreciation through an art form I know you love. Song. We fail the mission, you die. If you mismatch blacks, you die. No. Yeah, you better know your obsidian versus your lost soul versus your void. It's just suicide. Well, that's kind of our thing. Ha! True. And also David ad-libbed his yeah. Yeah. What? Now you're gonna drop some rain for this fight? You know rain fights are always a win. I love the rain. Harley gets it. It's like angels are splooching all over us. Oh, maybe, maybe not exactly what I meant. Okay, but this aesthetic. Completely blown out exposure, good guy hero shot while pumping the pixies? I really, honestly, genuinely love that these two characters care so much for each other. There might be a bit of romantic tension in this glance, but really they're the only stable things in their intensely bonkers lives. Long story short, screw you, Peacemaker. But then Peacemaker goes all Conan the Librarian and everyone, and I just I can't stay mad at him. I mean, if you're gonna have a giant shark beast and he doesn't rip a dude in half, you've probably done something wrong. Gun, you tricked me this time. I almost believe the actual button for the floor says that. Bravo, sir. Bra. Just a whole lot of nope. None of the non-nope, just pure nope happening. I call it Stato the Conqueror. Don't we all? That's one of the worst things I've ever seen, but also addresses what we were all thinking. Just pull them off. Not an option. But balance the thought of any such experiments being held on American soil. Using other countries to hide their dirty work? I've never rendition flights heard of anything like that Guantanamo Bay happening in the history of civilian drone strikes of this nation. This time these sons of is gonna be held to count. I'm kind of surprised I didn't see this coming. Honestly, John Cena nailed making Peacemaker such an obnoxious, jingoistic, absolutist moron. I totally didn't expect him to be a real threat. Huh. Gross, but fair. 
After all, they experimented on children! So, come up, it's. Again, just blowing my mind with this shot that keeps going way past when you think it's over. And fun fact, that's not a real helmet. Honestly, Steven Holder flag wouldn't have lasted five seconds with Cena, but this is Takeshi Kovacs flag, and I believe he had a shot. What? Expectation subversion? I did not see flag dying, and I don't think there's any coming back from that. I'd call that remorse. He's at least conflicted. And while Peacemaker has been the over-the-top caricature of patriotism throughout, it's not like he's just doing stuff because he's bad. Arguably, that was all this more than this. He's a bad dude, but his motivation to prevent an international conflict isn't incomprehensible. Shades of gray for most of these characters, I guess, is my point. Except for this a-hole. Splatter him all day long. Peacemaker. What a joke. But to be clear, I'm with Flag on this one. Peacemaker's idea of peace is a joke, and some purely evil things have been done in the name of peace. We can hear Bloodsport falling through the building in the background. Oh, no. Yo, gun, you never cease to amaze. It's a callback to the narrative device from the prologue. It makes my brain hurt. Sure, sure, jumping back in time isn't like a new thing, but when your entire opening is a fake out and the one week earlier thing is played off as a gimmick, you can't possibly reuse the gimmick. Unless, of course, you're James Gunn. Not to mention that the cutback is to slow down with Nanawe sauntering along with no apparent purpose as the camera bounces to his footsteps. But actually, there's something deeply sad about this version of King Shark that adds another layer to this film. Narratively, very little would change without Nanawe, but the dueling tones of absurd buffoonery and haunting loneliness are just... Ah. Oh, fizzle sticks. Adding fizzle sticks to the daily vernacular. Yike. I mean, yup. I mean, yipe. Yup. Yuck up. What was Milton gonna do? He was helping us! Who's Milton? What? I don't remember any Milton. He has been with us the whole time! <laughs> Great moment. A jab at how little main characters and audiences alike pay attention to side characters. I mean, Milton was in the epic rain shot. He had just walked in front of Harley. Missed it all. Milton was still with us? I don't think so. I think I would have noticed if a guy named Milton's been with us. <laughs> New dumb friends will do that sometimes. Again, his new dumb buddies tried to eat him, then he fell out of a dumb building, and now the dumb humans are shooting him. Justified. <laughs> Jumping skills. Also, it is almost exactly eight minutes later. 132.55 to 140.47. Gunslinger standoff. Only both duelers have machine-like accuracy and speed. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't have told Bloodsport your plan because he was ready for you. I use smaller bullets. What? They go inside your bullet holes without even touching the side. Smaller bullets. I don't know if 10-year-old me actually wanted to see Starro fight B-level villains in a fake former U.S. Banana Republic, but 30-something me is stoked. Hey, didn't work on King Shark, but sure, throw a little 556 at the kaiju. Dumb militaries is why superheroes exist. Well, that's properly disturbing. Aw, the big guy's still trying to fit in, even though those starlings definitely won't fit over that regal snoot. Is it screaming from its gills? Armholes? Leg butts? Appendage slits? Definitely not calling them appendage slits. <laughs> he has no feet. All his limbs are legs and his eye can just reorient itself, I guess. We've got a freaking kaiju up in this! Astute observations. Come in, are you there? Uh -huh. <laughs> Idris Elba is always a win. That one line, give that man more comedic roles. Leadership. I knew Sebastian sensed good in you for a reason. Sebastian jumping for joy is just about too cute for me to handle. Hey, Peacemaker's still alive. Wait a minute. And then alive, mother Boy of the month right there. Get on the satellite, Dale, you kid! Get out of here, Sunshine's John Murphy, with this triumphant score building up as the Suicide Squad runs into battle. Yeah, okay, spoke too soon on the dope gun. What a perfect way to adapt the comic character's power to teleport weapons to himself by having them build out of his high-tech suit. You see who that is? Huh? It's your mom! <laughs> So weird, so funny, so sad. I'm a fucking Oh gosh, grim. But there's something really wonderful about one of the saddest characters dying instantly during what seems to be one of the happiest moments of his life, finally seeing himself as more than a monster. We should all be so lucky. We're all gonna die. I hope so. Seems rough, but I'm glad they addressed this earlier. We need to help these people. Impossible, dear. They're corpses below those stars. See, they both save each other. But if we're being honest, Ratcatcher 2 is actually fulfilling a wish she had earlier. You loved me. I wish I could give that to you. And as odd as it might seem, she's showing Bloodsport love as a father would, comforting him when he's at his most vulnerable, helping him confront his murophobia. This city 
is my Holy killer delivery, Batman. Rats are the lowliest and most despised of all creatures, my love. They have purpose. So do we all. Taika drop in solid life lessons. Yo, what? No, I mean, yeah, but I don't know anymore. She found the purpose for the javelin. And let's just give it up for the ladies saving the day, shall we? Also, brutal, brutal. <laughs> I was happy, floating, staring at the stars. This film has a surprising amount of sorrowful moments, but this one by far takes the cake for me. It's truly devastating that this creature who was minding its own business, just chilling in space, was captured, tortured for years, and then killed when all it wanted to do was exist. At least there are no parallels in real life. Harley's alive. <laughs> Hugging. I could be your friend, Milton. Not my name. <laughs> friendship. Did I mention Sebastian is a wife win? More friendship. But I mean, what a way to close out the movie. Such a positive note. His own movie. Also, <laughs> he is a werewolf. Sure, sure, he can have a show too. I don't think I love this movie for any different reasons than anyone else, but I really love it for those reasons. We get a complete introduction and setup for characters that won't live past the 12 minute mark, and it works both as an expectation subversion and a continuation of a movie that arguably spent too much time on in introductions, as cool as they were. So it's like this joke, okay, we did that. Let's just jump into, whoopsie, everyone's dead. Just top tier trolling. I like the 13 minutes before the title card of this movie more than I like some entire movies. James Gunn is quickly climbing my list of favorite directors, and I love that this movie was successful and well-reviewed so that studios will be willing to take more chances on giving a visionary like him the reins. They said he could pick whatever characters he wanted and could do whatever he wanted with them, and that's what he did. I think my biggest hesitation when I heard about the movie and its casting was that characters would be returning for this pseudo-soft reboot, and after experiencing this movie, it's one of my favorite things Gunn did. This was not an easy task, but no actors were replaced. The closest we come to that is Idris for Will, but James was smart enough to use a different Villain. Top notch, everything from A to Z in this movie. And the cast is pitch perfect. This isn't Idris's first time in a comedic role, but it's definitely one of his best, and it's not like he's given that many bits or one liners. Just the way he plays off everyone else. Gunn mentioned that John Cena is probably the most gifted improvisational actor he's ever worked with, and that shows. So many great moments in this movie were ad libbed. It's not a toilet seat, it's a beacon of freedom! There's just no weak link in this movie, from Margot continuing to be Harley right down to this under five. And when a movie is this fun and just visually entertaining to watch, you don't necessarily need some huge character arc or massive theme, but that doesn't stop Gunn. We see Harley make tough choices in her post-Joker life, Polka Dot Man confronts his demons, Flag finally stands up to Waller for what he believes in, Bloodsport made a new buddy, and Cleo got to protect her loved one from their burdens this time. Heck, even King Shark learns about... not... Eating, not eating friends? I mean, he's, he's doing fine. No, that num num no. No, it's not num num. I hope this is the beginning of a new chapter for DC. I pray that they'll keep focusing on smaller, character-driven stories with no ulterior massive universe motive, and that in doing so, one will happen organically. There's no rush. Just keep throwing money at James Gunn, that's the moral of the story. Next week, another R-rated movie that I always forget is R-rated. Dumb friends! <laughs> no!